Uh, thank you very much. And can I start uh, by uh, issuing a warning? It's not uh, very often that politicians are allowed by the civil servants to use uh, slides. Um, I was told it was too much to expect of ministers they could do two things at once. Uh, and I said, oh, no, I've done this for years. And the first time I did it was at uh, Tyne Castle, of all places, being a Hibs fan, uh, and got it completely wrong. So apologies if I get it wrong today. Uh, can I start, though, by thanking Terry uh, and Nigel, chairs of the 2020 Transport Subgroup, for the invitation to come along this morning. And I'm sorry for the slight delay, but we're outside doing some uh, 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 photographs uh, for the event. Can I also welcome the work of the 2020 Climate Change Group in supporting the government's efforts to try to move to a low-carbon economy, uh, including the work that's been done in promoting sustainable travel to business. And also thank Scottish business in the community, uh, Todd Henshaw, uh, and Andrew Milson in particular for organizing this event and for bringing together such a wide range of delegates to share their knowledge and their experience. Uh, it's appropriate, of course, that this event is being held during Lift Chair Week when we're all being encouraged to consider uh, the benefits of car sharing. I've done it on a number of occasions this week uh, and uh, uh, it's certainly something that the more we can make people aware of that, uh, surprising how, some, how easy some people find it to do. Uh, first test on the right one. There you go. Um, I was wanting to say one or two uh, points about the object of today's event. Uh, obviously to share good practice, which we've been doing already, to hear uh, of the many possible actions which businesses and organizations can take to improve their own efficiency uh, and resilience, as well as to contribute, of course, to the environmental agenda through reducing carbon emissions. Uh, and also to launch the refreshed uh, Choose Another Way website. I think we're on the next one now, actually. Uh, one of the 2020 group's recent initiatives is the refresh of the website, and that's been managed by Energy Saving Trust uh, on behalf of Transport Scotland. And an important purpose of today's event is to relaunch the website following its redevelopment through partnership work by 2020 EST and Transport Scotland. And the website, as you'll know, contains a wealth of information aimed very much at businesses and organisations and the steps that you might take towards making more sustainable travel choices. I think also Edinburgh is an ideal uh, location to launch this, given the work that's underway currently to improve the quality of the public transport system, for example, with the Waverley developments, uh, with Egypt, uh, with Lothian buses, hybrid buses, uh, with Wi-Fi, and also the work that's been done to promote both cycling and walking. And I would thank those that have worked on the website to refresh and encourage you to use it within your organizations. The Government itself is committed, as you'll know, to achieving uh, a target of almost total decarbonisation of road transportation by 2050. And that will necessarily involve a wholesale shift uh, to electric and other low carbon vehicles over the coming decades. And it'll be absolutely key to making that, ta that target a reality. And businesses and organisations, I think it stands to reason, have to play their part in reducing carbon emissions and to considering electric vehicles as a viable alternative to the petrol car. I recently had the chance to go to South Lanarkshire Council and drive one of the electric vehicles there. But what struck me most was a transport manager who had been a transport manager for many, many years, and perhaps a few years ago would have been something of a skeptic, but had totally embraced and become an evangelist, in fact, for electric vehicles, because he had seen the benefits that he had in terms of fuel consumption and other benefits for the council. Now, yesterday, I see one or two people here from the meeting that we had of ECOS yesterday. Um, we recognise through that that uh, low carbon vehicles represent a growing opportunity for the Scottish economy as well, uh, integrated into Scotland's wider expertise in low carbon technologies and, of course, our vast, extremely vast uh, renewable energy potential. And ECOS, as a partnership, will provide us with the platform to encourage private sector investment in vehicles and in infrastructure and to maximise those opportunities for economic growth. It's one of the other benefits. People do tend to categorise uh, the initiatives on low carbon vehicles as being all about the environment, but of course they're about business and opportunity as well. In 2010-11 and 2011-12, the government invested around £8 million to allow Scottish councils and their community planning partners uh, to buy low carbon vehicles and to install crucially supportive uh, infrastructure. There are already 270 low carbon vehicles which have been added to the public sector fleet and 300 charging posts have been installed. And I know that those figures are a cause uh, for some people to have a go uh, at the initiative because you end up with more charging points. We start off with more charging points than you have vehicles in some cases. But I think a moment or two's thought uh, to that 
people realise you have to have that infrastructure in place before you're going to encourage people uh, on a wider basis to take up the opportunities of electric uh, vehicles. Uh, just last week, I opened three new electric car charging points set up at Edinburgh uh, Napier University campuses. And it's interesting that the extent to which uh, you have to think differently about these things, uh, the opportunities which are presented by uh, electric vehicles, uh, because after that um, uh, event up at Napier, uh, which was uh, co-attended by Renault with some of their cars, um, it got me to thinking, for example, about the fact that we are investing around 40, uh, 43, 45 million pounds in a new ferry between Ullapool and Stornoway. Now, we do have ferry charging points at either end, but why shouldn't we also have it on the ferry so that vehicles can get charged whilst they're on the ferry as well? So I think the initiatives should lead us, and this was very much the import of yesterday's meeting at uh, ECOS, we should start to think differently and across different sectors about how we can best move this forward. I think I would obviously concede, though, that low-carbon vehicles don't offer the entire solution, and other measures are also going to be extremely important, especially in the shorter term, in particular given some of the ongoing developments in communications technology uh, supported by the government's digital strategy, and you have Brendan Dick here today as well from British, British Telecom. There is, uh, through communications, an ever-increasing opportunity to avoid travel altogether where it's not necessary. Um, more and more businesses are finding it uh, easy to do teleconferencing. For example, even in the public sector, Highland Council, uh, which is quite difficult in a very large geographical area to bring people together for meetings all the time, now have it uh, that they can have teleconferencing in many cases where previously a great deal of travelling was involved. Uh, and obviously audio conferencing, which certainly I use a lot in my job, uh, can save considerable time and expense as well as carbon. Uh, travel to work, commuting, commuting and business travel account for around 30% of the miles travelled annually by each of us. Uh, the car travel still dominates around 67% of people using the car. And clearly there's a significant scope within those figures to support the emissions abatement agenda by looking at alternative ways of travelling. Scottish businesses uh, can also make substantial savings through encouraging fuel efficient driving by their employees. Uh, driver training has been found to reduce fuel consumption by potentially up to 15%. Uh, the other win from that is that fuel efficient driving is also safe driving by and large. I know this from first hand experience, one of the government drivers when you do have to use a car also has a business as he's entitled to do, which is a consultancy for large companies who want to affect real savings in terms of their fuel consumption and he is telling me that business has never been better. Uh, so obviously that message is getting across to businesses and other organisations. And they can uh, benefit from that kind of advice and also from other measures from the Energy Savings Trust, for example, into uh, green fleet reviews and work around the, the grey fleet where people uh, use private cars often for business purposes as well as conversion uh, to LCVs. And information and advice on those initiatives can be obtained uh, from Energy Savings Scotland advice centres around Scotland. Uh, EST also administer a low carbon transport loan fund on behalf of Transport Scotland and that makes available interest-free loans to support the investments in facilities that might be necessary to change current practices and to reduce carbon, uh, for example, as I've said, video conferencing equipment or cycle parking. There are, though, uh, other smarter measures which can also be used. Uh, we also encourage options, as I've said, such as car sharing and car clubs, and we're very supportive of the Car Plus scheme to develop a network of car clubs across Scotland. And I'm very encouraged by the very rapid growth we've seen, for example, in Aberdeen, where the Aberdeen Car Club, only launched uh, six months ago, already has close to 300 members. Uh, it may be somewhat related to some of the issues in Aberdeen about travelling by car. You'll be well aware of the uh, Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route and the controversy surrounding that. It's probably a worthwhile point to say that the government does uh, get criticised uh, for spending on roads sometimes, but uh, cars, uh, whether being shared or not, cycles, trams, buses have to use roads and we have to invest in roads. Uh, for my part, I'd much rather not having to be invest the hundreds of millions of pounds in a project that should have happened a long time ago. The same is true of the fourth crossing uh, and also in relation to the A9. But these things have to be done. We have to have a good road network, not least if we're to make the savings that we want to do in terms of emissions. Also, we have active travel, uh, encouraging people to drive less and to walk or cycle more for shorter journeys, certainly. My civil servants, despite sometimes what the press say, uh, regularly encourage me to, to walk, as I did this morning from a huge distance of down at the bottom of the Royal Mile at Holyrood, and I'll walk back as well. But we do that frequently and use the bus. 
Unfortunately, when you do that, if you're a politician, you don't claim for it. You can't claim for having walked, so nobody gets to know about it. It's not recorded. But I can assure you that many ministers uh, and civil servants are very involved in these initiatives. And as an employer, supporting cycle commuting can genuinely strengthen your business. There are well-known health benefits from cycling regularly, with a consequent uh, effect on productivity. I have to say, having done the cycle from Glasgow to Avonbridge, I didn't complete the whole way to Edinburgh. Uh, I, I'm not so sure about the health benefits. I felt terrible afterwards, to be honest. But um, <laughs> it, obviously, if you do it more regularly, then you will get those health benefits. And there's been a large-scale study in Denmark which found a 28% reduction in death rates for those that cycle commuted for 30 minutes per day. Uh, and a study in Finland noted a 40% drop in diabetes uh, for regular cyclists. We also have the Cycle Friendly Employer Award, which is a scheme developed by Cycling Scotland to support workplaces, and I would encourage businesses to register uh, for that. The government's committed to the uh, ongoing development as well of cycling infrastructure to complement the work around active travel promotion. And as part of uh, John Swinney's uh, 20th of September announcement on the Green Stimulus Package, an additional £6 million was committed across 2012-13 and 2013-14 to deliver further improvements to Scotland's cycling infrastructure. And I'm very pleased to announce today that the famous uh, National Cycle Network route will be upgraded from Barnton Junction here in Edinburgh out to the Forth Road Bridge. Uh, and money will also be available for local authorities to improve the cycle route along the A90, an issue which many people have campaigned on for quite some time. In addition, though, we'll be creating more cycle paths uh, in Glasgow in time for the Commonwealth Games. Uh, and further routes have been identified for improvements in Dundee, in Kirkcaldy, and uh, again in Edinburgh. There'll also be an increase, a substantial increase in funding for on-road cycle training for children and for the Give Me Cycle Space campaign through Cycling Scotland. I think the reason why those two things are important, first of all, is we've seen a real uh, uptake in terms of recreational cycling, not least through the Olympics, and also Chris Hoy himself has been a huge, um, a huge role model for people in taking up recreational cycling. But what we haven't done as well as uh, in relation to the uh, commuting cycling, so we have to try and improve the cycle networks that will allow people to go to and from their place of work, uh, uh, whereas previously they've used cars. And the second point about the education side of it, I think it's very important that we do tackle the fears which parents have in relation to their children using cycles on the road. Uh, training can be given, of course, in the classroom in an off-road environment, but I think it's really important to parents to know that their children have an experience of being on the road and the pressures which that can bring. Uh, and so that's why I think that's very important to increase the funding for on-road cycle training. Just to conclude, there is a great deal, I think you'll know better than me, I'm sure, that businesses and organisations can do to support the sustainable transport uh, initiatives that I've mentioned, and also to improve their own efficiency at the same time, uh, as well as their resilience, and also to get the health benefits which I've mentioned for their employees and their local communities through promoting active travel. Uh, I understand that later on today in the programme you'll hear a video presentation from Transport for London on their work around business travel during the Olympics and its impact. Uh, and I think that will offer uh, real food for thought for businesses uh, in Scotland to do likewise, not least when we host the Commonwealth Games in 2014. Uh, with initiatives such as Choose Another Way, offering support to improve business efficiency uh, and resilience as well as uh, emissions abatement. So I hope they'll take a, a great deal away from the various case studies you'll hear about this morning and where possible apply them in your own organisations to achieve both better business outcomes and better carbon savings. The most crucial aspect of these things, there's many initiatives going on from many different partner organisations across Scotland in relation to active travel and low carbon uh, emission initiatives. But the most crucial thing really is the cultural change, that people start to think differently about this. And that takes a bit of time, there's no question of that. But once you've made that change, it becomes the most natural thing in the world. And we'll all benefit greatly if we can succeed in meeting those targets, which I mentioned earlier on. So thank you very much for the invitation to come today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you.